Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. At the moment, Ledger is currently giving away free Bitcoin. When you buy a Ledger Nano S Plus, you get back $20 worth of Bitcoin. Ledger Nano X, you get back 30 when you get the Ledger Nano X and the Ledger Recover, you get back $40 free worth of Bitcoin. And when you get the Ledger Nano Duo, it's a fancy looking picture, they give you $50 of free Bitcoin. While I do not work for Ledger, I am an affiliate and I do have an affiliate link in the description below. For those of you who want some free Bitcoin and without any further ado, Let's jump right into it. So, um, time works in unmysterious ways because I was expecting this to not happen for a while. For those of you who were not paying attention, maybe were not here before, uh, we heard... A w I'll give you the, the, the super condensed version. Uh, Hong Kong got into the cryptocurrency market. They've kind of been taking over. We've had news for a while that there's a whole bunch of companies who've been like doing really big things behind the scenes. People in Hong Kong tend to be relatively well off and rich, at least from what I've seen in documentaries and heard from people who I know who have visited there. And we got news. It's been about 10 days, m maybe 10 days, that apparently they were gearing up to begin launching... Um, ETFs within Hong Kong as well. Yes, of course, very major news as the idea tends to be as China does not give direct access to their citizens to day trade crypto and a multitude of other things. Hong Kong would basically be the, the doorway, if you will, for people from the north and throughout Asia. Uh, to have access to cryptocurrency, Bitcoin products, and things of the sort. Uh, normally, when we hear things from Hong Kong, they happen very quick. So I don't know why I'm surprised at this one. We heard about a good, once again, about 10 days ago, that they were looking to approve uh, spot Bitcoin ETFs within the country. And lo and behold, here we already are. Hong Kong... Known as one of the leading financial centers of the world and China's gateway for international investments, has entered the process of approving a spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund. It says tied to Bitcoin. What? I would have never gotten that one. According to data from Singapore-based crypto services provider Matrixport, this investment vehicle could gather, they say, up to 25 billion with a b 25 billion dollars in demand from chinese investors through the southbound stocked connect program the southbound stock connect program again allows qualified mainland chinese investors to access eligible shares listed in hong kong i wish the world wasn't so convoluted i say that not as a joke just as simply as like a fact i'm constantly finding out the way that other places in the world deal with money, deal with investments, who, and I hate to even say this, who can and who can't do what, you'd be surprised how many uh, places and countries in the world have very strict rules as to who can invest and to who cannot invest. I, I, I believe my first entrance into that was in 2017, 2018, when we were talking about Russia in the cryptocurrency space, and for those of you who were not here or have forgotten, a lot of the news is that um, they were trying to make into law, so we read, that anyone I think who, oh gosh, what was it? Basically, any person who was not rich, like if you were not rich and didn't have paperwork that literally said you were rich, you could only, I think, invest up to, was it 1500 in crypto per year, and if you did any more... You, you might get thrown in jail. That's not even... I'm, I, I sat there. I was like, this has to be some kind of a joke. No, there are tons of other places that are very, like, strict when it comes to, like, investing in where you can... Like, literally where you can put your money. 
I'm sorry you're not rich enough. You cannot invest in this. It's it's a really weird system that we have here. And this is why I think that um, crypto has kind of appealed to the masses, if you will. There were a lot of studies. We'll, we'll move on in one second. But there were a lot of studies over, over the course of the last few years. Uh, and they, they, they've been asking, I mean... Gen Z and millennials and like they're, they're, they're trying to, you know, all these keywords that they're throwing out there where they prefer to invest and the, the a large chunk of them. So they prefer crypto. They were asking why. And they said, because it has one of the easiest ways to get in. It's not that difficult to really understand by Bitcoin, by fragments of Bitcoin. And that's kind of, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot easier for. And I mean, also, this is now a system where potentially 8 billion people could have access to it, but that also doesn't end up working out because we find out that like governments cut off the internet. For those of you who missed that video, also about 10 days ago, yeah, there are a bunch of places on the planet that have their own internet. You can Google it. They like literally their own internet. Their own news flows through it. Uh, this is one of them right here for those of you looking at the screen. Uh, and basically, anything that they don't want you to see, you will not see. Anyway, according to a report published by Matrixport, the potential approval of listed spot Bitcoin ETFs in Hong Kong could attract several billion dollars in capital. Facilitated by the South... That's a terrible... Southbound Connect program. Okay. Which provides mainland investors with about $70 billion in transaction ease per year. And then there's a photo of paper with a Bitcoin on top of it. Uh, for those of you who didn't get it, this is the most popular news story of the day. Apparently, apparently, um, Hong Kong is getting ready to approve and launch and list. Yes, also list uh, spot Bitcoin ETFs this month. That's why I said it goes very, very fast there, and I wish other places also simply did the same because as, as many times as the SEC would like to lie to us, it does not take uh, nine months to read paperwork that you already know what's written on it. So, yeah, we got news a couple of days ago that they were looking at them and thinking about them. There were two companies. Do they have them here? Yeah, Harvest, Invest, and China Asset Management. Apparently also others now as well. Boshi Fund and Value Partners Financial. It's, a, it's an interesting name to name something. Value Partners. Um, yeah. So a lot of people are, of course, optimistic about this news. The idea has always been, especially from a number of years ago, is that we saw in 2017, uh, people in China had a real big hankering for some crypto. And then they were kind of told no, and then you know it, it got hampered down as to what they were doing. And now if this allows them. People think that Hong Kong is basically acting as a sandbox, if you will, uh, to let the let the crypto people play in the box and see exactly what they're doing to be able to monitor them. So that if things do work out, people think that this could then expand to actual China, China. And um, people would be able to retrade crypto there, but I don't think so because the economy there already isn't doing too hot. And we've seen historically in a number of other places around the world that when economies begin to falter and people have the option, uh, you know, the option, the key word, they tend to uh, invest in things that aren't government bound or bonded if you will, and tend to go to crypto. In a lot of countries where that has been taking place, the governments have been trying to clamp down and, and tell people that they need or that they can't essentially um, use Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. Yeah, we will see in a couple of weeks what ends up happening. I have a very strange inkling, very strange inkling. That they're going to try and do this or the approvals will happen. I give it a day or two after the halving. Don't know why. Something in the air. I can kind of feel it that that's what they're uh, leaning towards. Yeah, that's the they work really fast. And I wish that the rest of the world also did the exact same thing. News. Uh-huh. All right. Let's move on. 
and I say this nicely, there's a lot of, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go through it. There's a lot of like, well, duh, kind of news floating around and not, I'm trying not to be mean or say it in a mean way. It's just more of a, remember I told you before, I've said this thousands of times, whenever we are near or in a bull run or we are next to an event or something is going to happen, there's always a lot of people who kind of like throw things out and they're like, well, da ba 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 So like, remember when Bitcoin previously was at $68,000 and there were a lot of articles that were like, well, the next step is 69,000. And I was like, did did you deduce that all all by yourself? Was that the, that was the rationale that you came up with when you saw that we were $18 away from it? Same thing when Ethereum was having its other upgrades and they were like, I think the price is going to go up after the upgrade, which usually always ends up happening. So there's also a lot of that floating around, not faulting the guy because I know that this is one of the uh, numbers that people wish to obtain quite quickly within the space. Uh, But alas, according to Raul Pal, CEO of Real Vision, The number of cryptocurrency users will surpass one billion dollar one. I'm used to saying one billion dollars. One billion people. There we go. In 2025, uh, there are a lot of psychological levels and numbers and things in the crypto space. For Bitcoin, it's one hundred thousand dollars per coin. For Ethereum, it's ten thousand dollars per coin. In crypto, we the numbers that we get and have been receiving over the last few years is that whether within Bitcoin or within crypto, cumulatively, it is estimated that we are anywhere between 50 million people to 100 million people strong. The idea is that once we pass by the 1 billion people, that we can no longer be ignored, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. but... I think these are old numbers. It's not that they don't apply, but I think it doesn't really... How do I say this? We already cannot be ignored. The cryptocurrency market is already gigantimous and huge, and we see new people entering the space every single day, so we know that the market is doing strong, but I think mentally, people want to be able to go on the news and say, we are now more than 1 billion people. Like that that, that kind of thing. In 2023... The, the Okay, I haven't seen those numbers anywhere. It says in 2023, the global cryptocurrency user base topped half a billion people. This is according to a report by the website crypto.com. You know, I go over news every single day, right? For those of you who, hello, for those of you who just subscribed or are watching the video. I go over news every single gosh darn day. I have n- never seen anything say that we are more than 500 million people in crypto not once but alas it's it's a report so fantastic this marked a 37 percent increase compared to the previous year nope i nope nope didn't see that the industry managed to reach significant adoption milestones despite micro financial headwinds for comparison There are more than 5 billion internet users around the world, according to data provided by Statista. Statista, okay. Just a few decades ago, there were very few internet users. They should have put a number there that would have also been interesting. For those of you who don't know or didn't see a while back, uh, we used to constantly, and I'm so glad people have stopped, we were constantly compared to the early days of the internet. You might remember a lot of we, we there were a lot of articles that said we're in 1995. We are currently in 1997. Crypto has entered to 1999. It was about the adoption of the internet and our adoption levels and they were comparing it to how many people were using the internet back in 99 compared to how many people were in crypto now. And I'm glad that people stopped cuz I assume they were like we're in 2004 like that kind of that kind of thing. Never, never, ever have I heard that we are more than half a billion people. Uh, If we are, cool. The idea of one billion people has to do with also trading volume, the amount of people who are sloshing money through the market in any given time, uh, and basically how strong our market will become. Um, I think a lot of people 
sometimes hang on to like older narratives is not that they don't apply because of course the market will mathematically be stronger with a billion people in it but it's not really i think a goal of people in crypto collectively like i don't think me and you we don't sit here go oh i can't wait to a billion people like that that kind of thing it's more of a it's going to happen so just let it happen i think there are more interesting things to uh, pay attention to when it comes to the space, but I guess the billion number is is kind of uh, fan, fan, fantastical. Uh, there's also um, a lot of numbers as well floating around the several billion when we are near like 2029 and all these other having kind of newses. Yeah, so that's the Raul Pal believes that we will surpass 1 billion people. In 2025, I mean, it seems completely logical if those are the numbers. There's a lot of um, optimism in the news. It hasn't really left, per se, uh, but it's more of a people are talking about it once again. A new market report from on-chain analysis firm CryptoQuant shows an expected surge in the price of Bitcoin over the next few months. What? That's that's insane. I would have never thought that. Um, that's also once again. This is why I said like, oh, water is wet. Like you know, we is definitely might not gonna is gonna totally happen. Kind of news. Um, histor. I mean, if Bitcoin, if Bitcoin doth not rise in price after the the having, then we haveth a much bigger problemeth. Because Bitcoin always goes up after the halving because it, 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 its supply drops by by half. I don't know if people got that part. So remember the other news that I have to keep you know referencing it that we got before uh, that showed you know three months after Bitcoin the price goes up and six months the price is upper and then nine months like that kind of thing. So um, there are far too many people to count right now who are releasing news like this. As we get ever closer to the happening inning, um, yes, Bitcoin's price will rise after the halving. This is how it tends to go based on supply and demand. Uh, just be aware, usually the day of the halving, prices tend to dip a bit because there's always those Handful of people who try and sell the news and then they end up getting caught because they have to buy Bitcoin back at a higher price. But that's also something else. So, yeah, uh, it's expected that it's expected that prices will rise as they've as, as they've done. Every, is that a mosquito? No, that's a that's a that's a feather. There was just a feather floating past me. Where did that come from? I'm not next to a pill. OK, um. Also, tying directly into it as well, uh, people are talking about alt season, altcoin season, the season of altcoins. Don't know what you want to call it. But what we have seen historically, for those of you who, who missed it, uh, nearly every time that Bitcoin goes up in price, altcoins tend to do so as well. And we've only historically seen that every time that the halving happens and Bitcoin begins to pump, the altcoins do the exact same thing. There are so many, so many price predictions for altcoins right now. It is a bit staggering. Um, the idea is that, the idea, not saying the reality, the idea is that we tend to, for altcoins, get back to their previous all-time high and then shatter those numbers. I've seen people screaming at me and a number of discrepancies within the comment section if I say any numbers that are completely out of the planetary loop. I, I don't really know. So we normally see that altcoins from their previous low tend to do a 10, 20, sometimes a 40x in price. And even sometimes from their previous all-time highs, we tend to easily see a 3 to 4 to 5x from those prices. 
So I've been saying that and have been, you know, that's what we've seen. And a lot of people are like, no, I don't think we're going to even get to the previous all time highs. I don't know about the numbers, bro. I, I don't know why I'm using that voice. And people are like, we, we might hit the all time high. I, I think it's constant market cycle skepticism that has taken a hold of the masses. And we always tend to see this. When people throw their money into anything, I don't care if it's crypto, I don't care if it's real estate, I don't care if it's stocks, it doesn't matter. And the price begins to fall, and especially within our cycles, if it falls for multiple years, I think people mentally get crushed. And they kind of go through these phases of, well, when the price goes, here's, here's, here's the reality. Well, when the price goes back to the previous all-time high, where it was before, I'm cashing out. I'm done with this market. And there's usually a mass exodus. People leave the market, leave that coin, and then they see within a month or two that the coin's value has doubled. This is, once again, this is what I've seen before in the past. This is not necessarily what's going to take place in the future. And the people throw their money back into it, and this is when the FOMO ignites, because they realize that they literally have half of what they had before. They see the price go up. They see that they would have $70,000, $80,000, and they only, and I, and I air quote here, they only have 40, and they go, crap, I need to put more money into the market. And then we start seeing a surge in prices, and it's always the same over and over. So as I've mentioned before, I think it behooves everyone uh, to have a limit on as far as how far you think you want to go for prices. And I say it in, in, in the way of don't assume that XRP is going to hit $148 during this cycle. I know someone chuckled, but there's someone out there who has that number in their head. There's someone out there who's waiting for a $600,000 Bitcoin. Don't have that number in your head. You know, have something a little bit more realistic, especially for those of you who are looking to take profits, as, as it were. Um, yes, we have always historically seen altcoin surge. What I think is different this time, personally, uh, from the inside looking in, I know I said it weirdly, I know, it, it, it was on purpose, is that we've seen a mega, a mega pump in Bitcoin's prices, but not in the altcoins. That is because Bitcoin is having half a billion dollars worth of inflows per day. So remember I told you it normally takes around nine months for us to get to the previous Bitcoin all-time high, and we're, 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 ahead of, we're ahead of schedule. It's because we've never experienced this amount of money flowing into our market before, flowing in directly into Bitcoin before. So Bitcoin's getting 99% of all the money that's flowing in. The other money is also flowing into the altcoins, but it's not as strong. It will probably take us into autumn or winter, autumn or winter, realistically, to hit some of the all-time highs for the altcoins once again, and then lucky for us, there's still nine to 10 months left of a bull run or a bull market for this space. So I, I'm seeing a lot of very discouraged hearts out there, especially when I scroll through Twitter. I see people talking about it for every single coin. Um, I won't even name all the coins, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's just more of a, this market takes an egregious amount of patience, which a lot of people do not have. It's not your fault per se. We've been raised to be impulsive. We've been raised to spend our money quickly. We've been raised in a system where we have, I, I watched another video on it. They were showing they why they say people from the early 80s, born in the early 80s until now, have such a huge amount of like economic anxiety and it's be they say, or so it's written, that because we grew up, or I, I remember watching, I remember watching as a little kid with my uh, grandmothers the TV show Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. We've been given this exposure to the lives of the very wealthy to see how they live, and the perception by us is that it took them a year, two and a half years, 
to become that famous, to be able to make that much money. And therefore, we have this kind of idea as well, especially with crypto. Well, crypto is going to make me super rich, super fast. And when it doesn't happen instantaneously, this is when people get discouraged. This is when people look for dog with hat, with bone, and all these other kinds of coins. Because the expectation is, well, I didn't make it with Bitcoin. I have to make it with something else. And when that doesn't work, and it's like, no, you just, you're, you're, you're jumping around every six and a half days to a brand new coin and swapping your money out. Of course, you're not making any money. Every market, every market requires you to buy and hold. Real estate, you got to buy it and hold it. You don't buy it, then sell it six days later. And I, and I would even extend a light, thin, thin olive branch to gold. You have to buy it and hold it. That's the way that all investments work. So your idea of jumping into this market and making $847 million in 16 and a half days is not going to be a thing. This is why I always try to caution and I say, if you are new to the market or if you're in the market, stop. I I, I literally almost said, don't go chasing waterfalls. I'm not even joking. I had to stop myself because I was like, don't go chase it. And I was like, no, stop, stop, stop. Basically that. Find things in the space, the crypto space that are legitimate. Stop following these brand new, shiny, awesome, amazing coins. I just read an article earlier. I don't have it on here, obviously. And they were talking about this massive, it it said a 70% decline in prices and trading volume for a number of brand new meme coins. And it was like, where's the money going? Why is no one throwing it? And I was like, because the people who create these coins, they know that they're scams and they use these scams to make money from you. Then they take their money out and they were the trading volume. So always try, if you can, if, if you want to, to follow the legitimate projects. Legitimate. Legitimate legitimate gotta say multiple times because someone heard me once it went right out their ear immediately after so yeah we are at the stage where we believe that uh, we are going to see the market begin to pump very soon i would give it two or three weeks time because there's always a dip there's always a dip after the halving it's the same exact thing when ethereum upgraded whenever bitcoin upgrades any other coin there's always a dip. It makes it to the news. Is the market over? And it's like, sit down. Please. We're tired of looking at your face. Um, yeah. It's nice to see the optimism still floating. I mean, at least larger portions of the optimism. I don't know what it is. And it's people who I've seen in the market for a long time posting on Twitter these like negative things. But this is always, I think it's one final level of capitulation, if, if I can say that. I, I'm seeing a lot of it, and it's because the algorithm, if you hover over anything on Twitter, the algorithm's like, this is what he wants. I'm seeing so many people, and I say this in, in the nicest way. I haven't been keeping up with it, but when, my, when I see on Twitter what the algorithm's showing me, so many people like bashing these people who uh, are into VV or are into Omi and stuff like that, or who told them you know that they were buying Omi. And I mean... If an investment's not right for you, don't go for it. For those of you who do not know, I don't talk about uh, VV or Omi that much anymore because I told you before, for those of you who don't watch the other channel, Money Rules, um, everything I buy on on VV is kind of like in a loop, if you will. I'm, I'm focusing on very specific things that I myself you know, am buying, and I don't feel the need to directly advertise every third or fourth video that I'm buying Omi. I have Omi. I want more Omi. The previous all-time high was one cent. I do believe the price is definitely going to surge, especially with all the partnerships and usage that they have um, coming up, especially with the expected exchange listings. But I, I, I find it odd that everyone's like attacking these people now. And it's like, I don't know what to say. Um, just be nice to people. And you know, this is why I always say, do your own research. Understand, understand, this is one of the most important parts of life, is that you're an adult. You, yourself, you're an adult now. Oh, yeah, surprise, (laughs) shocking. Um, 
And because someone talks about something does not mean that you have to throw your money into it. See the long pause of silence? It's because it's the truth. So whenever I, I tell you this all always, if you ever hear me say something that sounds weird or doesn't sit right with you or you need more explanation, Google it. Find out more information yourself. You should not be in this market without having an adequate amount of knowledge and the, and the knowledge is, is everywhere. It's online. It's for you to be able to read up on for free. Learn more about it. Become more educated in this space so that you can help other people who also want to enter this space as well and you can help them dodge all the scams that are out there. I told you I, I'm in this market for long term, long, 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 long term. So I've been through the dips. I've been through the cycles. I've been through the depressions. I've been through all these things with, with all of you over and over and over. But a lot of new people, and I, and I say new from a one to two year perspective as when the market was just going back down, get into the market and they have all these crazy expectations and they think that everyone in the space is a guru. And it's like, no. I'm I'm learning the same as all of you every single day. This, you know, this, this this is the significance of literally going through cryptocurrency news daily. Is I can now reference stuff that happened years and years ago, but it's also because I'm learning. I'm like, okay, well, I remember seeing those seven thousand coins in the news. They're not there anymore. Oh, there's a lawsuit against them. Oh, those coins were definitely a scam. It's you know, you you learn as 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 you go along and. In the nicest way, you have to, it's your money. It's the money you earned from working. Make sure that you know where you're putting it. I personally believe in Bitcoin because I've seen how this market has been for eight years now. And I've researched back into the early days and I've seen the movement and I've seen the amount of users. And anyway, you understand what I'm Talking about, but yes, the optimism is still there. I'm very, I, as I've mentioned before, very excited for the having. It's like, I feel like it's long overdue at this point. We are in a, this is, this is such the weird cycle. Having to wait for the having, and it feels like, it constantly feels like it's it's passed by already. Uh, weird question here. Is, it, is anyone else planning on like a, like a, like a, like a having party? I ask because three of my friends were asking what I'm doing for the having as if it was like a birthday or something. And I was like, existing? I might have breakfast that morning. So it looks like I'm literally going to be invited to like events for the having where we are literally going to be sitting there watching a screen counting down. I guess it's very futuristic. I, I don't know, but... Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely, this is what I'm asking once again, asking if everyone else is going to be there. I do sincerely hope that you have all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be. I do hope it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.